<laughs> All right, let's go here. Fetching video stream. This can take a few seconds. All right, here we go. Let's hit go live there. All right, let's go here. Preview broadcast. Show me one time. Show me one time. Come on. Okay, yeah, kill me again because we're getting the loop again. One time, come on. Kill you again? In, in other words, I'm getting the loop again from your end. Or, oh, maybe. Okay. Hold uh, on, maybe. I, I killed. Yeah, no, I did. I killed okay, it. Kill right. me again because we're getting the loop again. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go off of YouTube. I'm gonna go off of everything. Alrighty, and we're gonna hit. Uh, you know what? Forget I killed, that. Yeah, no, I did. I killed it. Hit go live there. Okay. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go off of YouTube. I'm gonna go off of everything. Alrighty. Okay. So let me check one more time. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna go off of YouTube. I'm gonna go off of everything. Alrighty. Okay. So let me check one more time. <laughs> I think my video, my audio sounded good there. Yeah. No. I once again, I think it's a lot better for everybody who's listening to us now. We apologize. Just had a computer crash. So trying to get make sure that we video, can. My audio sounded good there. Yeah, no. I once again, I think it's a lot better for everybody who's listening to us now. We apologize. Just had a computer crash. All right, so, so gonna make sure we're live on Facebook again. Is we're there... live. We've been live on Facebook for about a minute. Okay, you can definitely see us and on Facebook. Nineteen seconds. Yep. Been live for a minute and twenty seconds. All right, excellent. I see us live on Facebook now. Professional. Let's... Podcasters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's not go crazy there. Okay, now let's see if we're live on Twitter. Yeah, come on, you hunk of junk. Yes, we're live on Twitter. I think we have one viewer. Let's turn this up and see if we can hear ourselves. A minute and 20 seconds. All right, excellent. I see us live on Facebook now. All right. Okay, enough is enough. This is This is going to be it. All We're right, going to be up in three, two, one. Welcome to the Joffrey Podcast. My name's Bubba, and with me as always is... Catfish. Catfish, we are getting together for the first time in at least 20 minutes to talk about the Game of Thrones Season 8 trailer. Are you excited? I have so much to say about it that I have not yet said, and so much to say about it that I have already said. Ooh, those are two different things for sure. Mm -hmm. Everybody, we are the Joffrey of Podcasts, first of his name, first in your hearts, a Game of Thrones podcast with a Joffrey attitude and a touch of Masande <laughs> and a bunch of other things. <laughs> you can find us on Twitter at Double PHQ, on Instagram at Double PHQ, on Facebook, just Facebook.com slash Double PHQ, and on YouTube where you actually have to do some serious searching. Just search Double P Media and then... The Joffrey Podcast will come up one way or another there. Also, we have a website, doublepmedia.com. That's where you can find out about all of us. If for somehow you're brand new to the Double P family, please subscribe, 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 subscribe. However you're listening to this, we would love to have you become one of our, what I like to call, double L's. Double L's? Well, Catfish here for the final season. I think the people who've put up with our ridiculousness for so long, we need to call them double L's loyal listeners. Oh, they certainly are loyal, especially if they're listening to this podcast again. Right. And I'm not talking about the from season four, five, six, seven, and eight, but again for season eight. That's right. Today we're going to be doing one of our infamous, one of our tragically long frame by frame analysis of the brand new Game of Thrones trailer. We've been doing this for a while to take you behind the scenes way back when. Some people said, oh, we're going to do a frame-by-frame -frame breakdown of the Game of Thrones trailer. Yep. I think it was season but, four, but they weren't but did doing they do it. it. No, they, they didn't do it. No, they, they weren't doing do it. it. Not frame-by-frame. Frame. They were doing no. it kind of shot-by-shot, scene-by-scene. Scene. So we decided... That's not frame-by-frame. Frame. No, we decided that His Grace would not take any shortcuts. He would actually look at this darn thing frame 
by friggin' frame. Now, Bubba, yeah. for years and years, and we've years. had this friendly discussion slash rivalry. Uh, we've almost come to blows. I did bring out the crossbow one time. Yep. To figure out how many frames there were actually per second. But we can put all that aside this year. Leave because it. you have actually gotten, yeah, yeah. Put it, take it out, get it out of here, just like the cats in King's Landing. <laughs> so, listeners. And you have answered this question. What question have I answered? How many frames are there in this trailer for season eight of Game of Thrones? And Catfish, I answered it in the only way I knew how. By mm -hmm. randomly picking a size of trailer in YouTube, in this case, the 720 uh, version of the trailer in YouTube, and downloading mm -hmm. that and then spitting that out frame by frame. Note, if you watch the trailer on your HBO subscription on a normal television here in North America, you're seeing approximately 30 frames a second. If you're watching it on your telly in the UK or somewhere else, you might be seeing it at 25 frames a second. But I'm pretty sure... This version of the trailer and the frames we'll be referring to today are mm -hmm. 24 frames. And so how many frames do we have, Catfish? Bubba, we have 1,531 frames to discuss. That is an awful, <laughs> awful lot. What are we? What have we done? <laughs> but because other people will only break it down shot by shot, or you know, image by image, we're gonna we're gonna one up every Game of Thrones media outlet out there and break it down frame by frame. And you know well, what? Well, people people are gonna miss some things. Yes, if they don't look at each frame individually, that's correct. Exactly, because there might be some things inserted between the frames, and if you haven't broken it down the way we do, you won't know if we're lying when we tell you it, that there's something inserted between the frames that you're missing. It moves too quick for your eye to notice. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Exactly. There may be some hints. For anyone who is new to the Joffrey podcast, you know that uh, – you know, a lot of people in the last few years have finally come around to how great and wonderful Joffrey is. Uh, and so there's a lot of people out there, but we were on the vanguard of this. Oh, yeah. We, were, we, we, we led the charge for Jack Gleason's uh, eventual return in season eight to pick up the pieces. Um, there is so no way, there is no way that a Joffrey podcast is going to march behind a vanguard led by a Glover. A.K.A. Matt's GOT audio blog. We're in the vanguard, and we are, we are in the vanguard. So that's why we take this seriously. This frame by frame. <laughs> this is it. The only thing we take seriously. And catfish. Let's just get right to it. If you let's do it. Be watching this on Facebook and YouTube. It's either going to crash, or I'll be bringing up each frame so you can follow along and look at each frame we're talking about. So let's Love it. go ahead and put this on. Air. So we, we won't won't actually then be able to lie to them no. that about Joffrey showing up in, in interstitial frames. No, we'll just be lying to the people who aren't watching this on Facebook or YouTube. Okay, great, great, great. Wait. So for anybody going, anybody uh, watching on Facebook Live, just go along with it. All right. So here we are, Catfish. Oh, I think I covered up the most important part. We're on frame number one. Frame number oh. one. Mm -hmm. And so what does this frame, I'll describe it for anybody on the audio podcast, what is this mm -hmm. frame, which is an almost black screen, but in the middle of the screen, you can see it's kind of a little bit lighter, the letters HBO with a registered trademark symbol right in the upper right corner of the O, and then down mm -hmm. in the lower right hand corner, there's a ghosted image of HBO. What do you think this is trying to tell the viewers? Any clues about season eight? Well, I... <clears throat> We all know that one of the things that Joffrey is famous for is his skills with the crossbow. Right. And as you can see here with the HBO, uh, they have made it so it looks like a, a crossbow target there. So right off the bat, they're giving us the clue uh, about Joffrey's return. Oh, yeah, for our sake. Now, I would say that this frame number one, and we're going to break them all mm -hmm. down, I would say that this first frame is really just saying HBO Home Box Office is what HBO was originally titled as way back when, and I think they're trying to get people to remember, hey, Game of Thrones airs on HBO's. 
Let me say that if you've seen this trailer forward, you know that kind of lighter area right by the H and the B that goes up and down the screen, up and down the screen, excuse me, that is a blurred image of a face of a character who's a double S. Double S? A Surly Stark. It's Arya oh, Stark boy. in this case, but that's her just barely, you know, which is less black. It's that little smudge right behind the H and the O. So that's frame number one, and we're going to break them all down. How many again? How many left to go, Catfish? What's the countdown? <laughs> I believe we have uh, over 1,500 left. Listen, so as the, we num- get cracking. as the numbers get smaller, the frames get bigger. <laughs> okay, so let's... <laughs> there are no small actors only more frames all right so let's go to the next frame and i'm actually going to jump ahead to frame 00003 the third frame in this so frame two was too similar to saint frame one so here we are on frame three and honestly Mm -hmm. it's probably identical to frame one but when i look at this i see those letters hbo and i think what they're trying to tell us about season eight is hodor been othered meaning that hodor was a good guy willis we Mm -hmm. like to call him got attacked by the White Walkers, killed, we assume. We assume brought back to life and turned into one of the Whites, their army of the dead. In the book, they call them Others, so this HBO to me stands for Hodor Been Othered. Mm. Wow, that, that that's taking quite a bit from it. I like that. Okay, let's go to the next frame. And once again, we're going to kind of only do the odd frames. We apologize. Here we're on frame five, Catfish. What do you think this HBO tells us? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that when I look at this, I'm like, what uh-huh. is it trying to tell us about season eight? And I think, see this HBO and I go, House Baratheon, ouch. Because they're gone, <laughs> except for Gendry. HBO, that's it's a, getting us ready for season eight. What, what do you see in frame five here, Catfish? Uh, well, you know what? I, I, I saw the same thing you did in frame five, but I saw something different in frame seven. Oh, okay. Let's get, let's get ahead to that. Boy, we're going fast yeah. now. Here we are. We're on frame seven. Tell us about it. All right. Well, what it looks like is it's saying the same thing, mm-hmm. HBO. Right. Right. But on black. As, as, you, as you remember, you, you know, there was a lot in the first few years a lot of sex position oh, yeah. in the show mm-hmm. where they would try to do an info dump while people were getting busy so as not to bore people. Oh, yeah. I think what they're trying to tell us is they're going to get back to some of that in this season because the HBO here stands for Hard Bodies Ogle. <laughs> Ooh, we're going to ogle some hard bodies, just like yeah, we're back yeah, in season sure. one with Sex Position, Catfish. Exactly. You, are, exactly. you know what? I think we, we should have put a spoiler warning on this as we break it down. I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead to frame nine because i got to be honest, this is one of my favorite frames in the entire trailer. Now, mm-hmm. people watching on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter might say this looks identical to all the others, and it does. Mm-hmm. But in this case, I see this HBO here on frame nine of the trailer, and I just think to myself, this stands for Harry Bran Order. Because Brad, you know, he's going to have to start shaving. You know, he's a three-eyed raven, and he is going to start controlling people. Who's to say Bran isn't going to be able to raise the dead? Maybe all those Starks down in the crypts who have swords by their crypt. Who's to say Bran, like the Night King, couldn't warg into them, raise these dead, and come back and defeat the Night King? Kind of like in The Lord of the Rings. Uh, you know, and I didn't read the books. I just saw the movies. But in The Lord of the Rings, didn't, like... Uh, didn't they go get some ghosts and say, hey, ghosts, come help us defeat these people at the White City? Mm, mm. See that? I mean, uh, it's, it's all right uh, here I in love Frame how 9. It's bringing it all in. That, it, well, no, that was Frame 11. Oh, oops. Oh, was that Frame 9? Oh, it, it is. No, you're right. It was Frame 11. So let's let's go forward to Frame 13. And, okay. Uh, fr- now, Frame 13, yeah? to me, what it's saying here is, uh, you know, there's going to be a shocking surprise. Yep. This season, not for us, okay, but for John. And so, what the HBO stands for here is yeah. he's boning his o aunt. <laughs> oh, his o aunt. So that has yeah. like a little Valerian in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, o aunt yeah, yeah. is Valerian for aunt. Love it. Very, very, very disturbing. Let's go forward to frame uh, fifteen. And now, look at it. It's HBO's in white on a black background, except for the smudge of Aria blurriness there in the middle. To me, it says, uh, 
you know, it says that it's the it's the long night for the blackness, but also it's the cold and white of the winter with the White Walkers. I love it. Let's go to frame 17. Boy, it still generally looks the same here as HBO. Any thoughts on frame 17, Catfish? Yeah. Um, in this one, what it's trying to do is it's trying – there's some characters that we've lost, we think we've lost, and we've, we've, we've come back to again. Right. And in this one, it's trying to tell us it's it's a little statement. Uh, what would happen if if you took a little trip and did some eating at an inn, and this stands for hot pies bread? Ooh, <laughs> delicious! Why, why are they spoiling, giving away so much of season eight in this trailer? Is what I want to know. I mean, it, it it's there only if you see it. It is there. So. Uh, I've jumped ahead, believe it or not, to frame mm-hmm. 23, frame 23 here, Catfish. Okay, yeah. It's because the HBO logo finally starts to get a bit blurry. It's like mm-hmm. blurring up. It's like the clouds and mist are moving in as the Night King and his army of whites attack. Here, jumping ahead to frame 27, look at how it's so blurry. HBO looks like a bunch of snowflakes. Which is what mm. we, what will be when we cry because Game of Thrones is gone. It's it's incredible. Yeah, well, that's what that's a problem with all you millennial snowflakes. <laughs> well, I'm a millennial. Why are you ripping us, catfish? Oh, so tough. I should say uh, it's it it's as we go forward. Look here at frame twenty nine. It's completely blurry. You can't make out anything. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it's almost it's like, like a it's like a whiteout. Right, but it's like a rack focus in here. Jumping ahead to frame 35, so we're about a second and maybe a third of a second into the trailer, and here we see her, Arya Stark, her eyes are closed, her skin is glistening like she's been sweaty, you can see some bruising in this frame. What do you Mm -hmm. think about frame 35, and what do you think about Arya as a whole going forward, Catfish? Well, uh, you know, as uh, I was thinking about this uh, very carefully, and it's uh, shocking uh, to see her so far, we have seen uh, Arya become uh, a very strong uh, woman who's not afraid of anything, right. and uh, all of a sudden, uh, she is a big old double S. D- double S. Yeah, Stark scaredy cat. <laughs> Interesting how you flipped it around. She's not a scared Stark. She's a Stark scaredy cat. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. As we jump ahead to frame thirty-seven. What's interesting, and Catfish, we should let our listeners know if they don't already, you're a professional actor. I mentioned that we started in Her Eyes Were Closed, and throughout the next several frames, Arya's eyes are going to open and close, open and close. So if you're an actor and you're trying to give across that you're a scaredy cat like Arya is in this scene, is that a technique would you, you would use? Because she really does here. I've jumped to frame 39. Her eyes are completely open for 39, 40, 43. Her eyes are open, but they're going to start closing here. You know, just is that something that people do? What do you think? What, what do you do to convey well, I, I, being afraid? Yeah, I, I think uh, you know. I mean, it's the opposite of more. I think of if you're if you're going to portray a strong character, is that is that you're not going to not going to blink because the blinking does show weakness and 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 being a, being afraid. Okay, so look at how quick this 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 goes on frame fifty seven. Her eyes are closed again. By fifty nine, they're back open. What? Could Arya be so afraid of catfish? We haven't talked about this. So Arya is here once again. She she looks either dirty or bloody or bruised or all three of the above. What could you imagine? What would make Arya, who we saw become a faceless man, become a, a stone cold, emotionless assassin? What could scare her so much, in your opinion? Oh yeah, I mean she was uh, at some point they had tried to convince us last year that she was ready to take down her own sister. Now. I believe that as her as a, her personality that that she would have done that. I I thought the clumsy plotting led me to believe that's not what was happening. But her personality was so much that we would believe that she would take out her own sister. Yeah, it's so, clear the only thing that she would be afraid of at this point is it's not a White Walker, it's not a, a you know an undead dragon, it's not even an undead uh, Hodor. Uh, spin in uh, a, a single that goes for like 45 minutes. Yeah, where you just a DJ Hodor's <laughs> rave. It just won't end. <laughs> yeah. We need a it's bathroom clearly, break, Hodor. It's clearly 
Joffrey Baratheon. You think that King Joffrey has come back. Arya realizes that he's going to smite the traitors, and that's what has her so scared. Yeah, and I just want to be clear. You know, some people might be a little confused here. They might think, oh, you're talking about uh, an, an undead Joffrey? You're talking about a White Walker Joffrey? No. No. As we all know, Joffrey faked his own death uh, to go behind the scenes and root out the usurpers uh, one by one. I have been, as you've been talking, Catfish, I've been just mesmerized because hearing that King Joffrey would do that to save the kingdom is incredibly, incredibly powerful. I've also been going frame by frame, and I hope everybody's been noticing, she is just always, you know, always blinking, always kind of breathing heavy as someone who is a double S Stark scaredy cat. Finally here at frame 105, so this is, you know, about three and a half seconds into the trailer. If uh, I'm doing the math right on this, we can see her face turns uh, to the, our audience. It turns to the right, to her left, and, and she's like, it's time to book it. And then we get a close-up here at frame 107 of, of the, as best you can. I'll try to zoom in on it for people who can see. We get a, a, a image of her bruised and bloodied forehead right above her eye there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If if whoever she's been running from, this chase has not done Joffrey. her well. Mm-hmm. Here she is. She's in a hallway. We should assume, based on the brickwork, which I'm running my mouse over right now, or the stonework, excuse me, that this is Winterfell. And she is running. There's some uh, fire up uh, lanterns, whatever you would call it giving a little bit of light to this. Now we're behind Arya. She's running by windows. She's running down hallways. This is a good shot of her. Let me go back to this. That was a great shot of her at uh, frame 137. Look at how scared she looks. Once again, that's to me, the fact that they've built up Arya to be this super assassin and to see her so scared. I've seen some people say maybe she's running from Jack and Hagar or the Waif because she knows what they would do to her, that she's been using their training kind of for very personal reasons, like she did with the phrase. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, I, I think that, sure, it could happen, but it wouldn't happen here in Winterfell. It wouldn't happen so early in the season, and I think most of these frames do come from the first couple episodes. Well, I mean, let's face it. I, I mean, I'm not sure how it's going to be handled in the books, and there probably should be some sort of uh, repercussions. But I'm, I, I feel like if it would, ha- if there would be some kind in the eighth season that it would, that it would kind of slow us down. I mean, we had kind of like a forward momentum. You know, w- wouldn't it be weird to see anything to see Jockin back again and and to have that storyline come back? Well, it, it, part of me kind of wants it to come back so it could feel like it has more. Like it had a more of an ending, that storyline. It felt like mm-hmm. she went away to Bravos, and at a certain point she just was like, okay, I'm done. Bye, guys. And so that's just me. I, I, I understand your feelings. For everybody listening to this, please go, tweet at us, go to our Facebook page, comment on the YouTube thing. How do you feel like? Do you feel like the the you want to see Jack again and have the Faceless Man story kind of end? Or are you like, we're done with it, we've got bigger fish to fry phrase to fry and i mean the night king and the army of the dead let us know we're on frame 145 and it finally cut to outside. i mean we're moving right along yeah we cut to outside and you can there see the uh profile of davos seaworth i've said on another preview podcast that we did catfish that you know i i i want to be shocked and so one of the things that i thought well how could they shock us one of the things i thought is that they keep bringing up Davos, I'm not much of a fighter. And then Tormund says, no, you're not. And he really hasn't done anything in any of the fights he was in. In the Battle of Blackwater, he got blown off the boat really before he did any fighting. In the uh, Battle of the Bastards, he was in the fight, but I don't think we saw him beat up anybody. He didn't go north of the wall in Pat Spinagle's infamous White Heist. So maybe they keep saying, oh, I'm un- use- useless in a battle, useless in a battle, because he'll do something heroic in a battle, like something crazy like kill the Night King. I, 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 that would shock me. Maybe that's why I'm predicting it. What do you think about old Davos Seaworth? Here we are on frame 155, Catfish. What do you think he's got going in season eight? Well, I mean, his name isn't Davos Fightworthy. So <laughs> well, It isn't? It's not. It's seaworthy. So unless he's on the ocean, he's not. He's not worth his the 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 knuckles he rolls dice with. Okay, I want to say real quick 
that as we're going, I think you saw this catfish. We have some double L's. Double L's. Loyal listeners watching along right. here. I think this is on the Facebook page. We've got one of our true hero listeners, Holly Hunt Pants, who's saying, y'all are insane, and I love you guys. Thank you so much. If anybody is listening to this live, don't suffer alone. Write in the chats. Write to us <laughs> and let us know that you're doing it. So Davos up on the battlement. He's not wearing a hat. How cold is it? You know, none of these people are like, hey, you don't want to put on a hat? I mean, you know, what's he what's he worried about? Frostbite? All these scenes kind of, <laughs> yes, why not frostbite, you know? All these scenes uh, kind of begin and end in black. So here at frame 173, it's gone back down to black again as we travel along this. Yeah, we did not get path. we did not get very much of Davos in this shot, for sure. Okay, then. Now, by, one thing I'll say oh, about yeah, this oh. trailer, though. Yeah, let's uh, hear just sort of Just sort of general overall. I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like they actually showed us more for this season's trailer than last season's trailer. Now, we actually were able to figure some things out from the frame-by-frame frame of last season's oh, trailer yeah. uh, that were some pretty big reveals. And I don't know whether we're going to find that tonight, but it feels like, you know, they gave us uh, they gave us a, a lot of new stuff here tonight. Did, did, did you did you feel that way about the trailer, or did you think, oh, they're just, they just gave us a mishmash of stuff? I think that... Let's go back to season six. They couldn't reveal that Jon Snow was going to come back from the dead. So that trailer didn't show a lot. In the um, in the end of season six, the infamous episode, The Winds of Winter, which I love so much, which featured the blowout at the Sept, blowout prices at the Sept, do you know that they, you know, they were never going to show that. They were going to always hide that explosion of the Sept and even kind of anything around it, they were going to hide yeah, that in the trailers. Yeah, except we, yeah. So, but we we noticed that in the trailers. Well, we noticed clues that were pointing it to it. Yeah, we did. That's true. But um, anyway, sorry. Let's go along here at frame one seventy seven. We've jumped back out to um, we've jumped back out or sorry, back inside to Arya still running. We see once again one of these. Um, you know, I'm sorry, me English bad, but one of these lanterns as she is running, running, running. Now, one more quick question about this trailer, though. Sure. I've seen a lot of complaints about this, and I wonder if the uh, about how dark everything is in the trailer. And my question to you is: Is everything that dark in the actual show, or did they darken it to sort of hide things in the trailer? Well, I've heard one group, uh, one other podcast actually suggest, oh, they're darkening it in the trailer to make it more dramatic. And I believe that could be correct, but if they're not, people better turn up the brightness on their TVs, because you're right, it is tough to make things out here. But to make things out, we are doing, we're on frame 193, and Arya Stark is holding, not Needle, not the dagger that she was given by Bran via Littlefinger that uh, was used by the assassin to try to kill Bran back in the second episode of the first season. It looks, it appears like, and here I'll even zoom in on it for everybody watching along, that looks like a, uh, what you would call a dragon glass dagger, doesn't it? I mean, that looks to me, once again, we're on frame 193, excuse me. Either that or it looks like a really uh, dull uh, kitchen knife. Like right. right before you're like, well, you have to get these sharpened or buy new ones. <laughs> but here, Because the, they won't cut the bread anymore. No, on frame, let's go back to frame 195. I mean, she, she is beat up, Catfish. The, we're going to 195 because she's a bit brighter on this one. And just looking at her. You know, look at this, the whole side of her face. This is going to sound crazy. Does it not look a bit more like the hounds? And admittedly, it doesn't look scarred so much as bloody, but gosh. Oh, yeah, and it. it gets a lot brighter in 197 and 199. Oh, 199, yeah, look really at that. See it oh, my goodness. You can gracious. really see it full. I mean, you know, Do you again, mean, they're, they're trying to follow the books as much as possible. Yeah. But also you have to realize, like, even though this is the last season, they're not going to have another one. They're going to have other shows. And they want to do what's called fan service. What do you mean by that? Go deeper. Well, I mean, fan service is like when you do something that's not really a, a part of the script or maybe even it works against it, but it's something the fans really want to see. And so you want to make them happy. So how long have we wanted to see someone kick Arya's ass? <laughs> and so this is, this is all for the fans. Here okay. you go. You've wanted to see this forever. 
Frame 219 is where mm -hmm. it starts to fade up from black, and we are seeing quickly as we get to frame 225, 227. It's Varus. They are in the Winterfell Crypts. How do we know or should assume it's the Winterfell Crypts? In the background, we see a stone direwolf and a, uh, what we assume, it's so dark it's tough to tell, but a stark, uh, you know, kind of burial monument. People say this character on the far left of the screen is Gilly and her baby. I kind of believe that to be true. Varys, another guy who doesn't look scared too much. Frame 231. Look at his eyes. Look at that expression. This guy's like... I mean, like, this, is, <laughs> this, this is so dark. I'm I'm only semi-ashamed to say, yeah. after I watched the trailer a couple times and then I, I read something about it, I was like, Varys? Where was Varys in this trailer? <laughs> <laughs> I see him. He is afraid. Now... This puts us in great opposition to, again, I, I hate to bring him up again because I'm spoiling it for so many people. So many. That Joffrey is going to come back this season. Oh, yeah. But when Winterfell was being attacked and Joffrey was leading from the basements, he wasn't afraid. No. Who? Yeah, I mean, that was, he was a man. And so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had a very, very brave face down there. <laughs> He did. He did. Uh, we come back to Arya. So, what do you, so what do you think this is? Uh, which one, Arya? Very no, Varys. Okay, so in season seven, Melisandre told told Varys, "Hey, you're gonna die in this land." I'll tell you this. I, I, I thought she said they both. They both. Yeah, they were both. Gonna die. Sorry, she said, "Yeah, you're gonna die, and I'm gonna come back because I'm also gonna die." But was it King's Landing or Winterfell? I thought well, they... she she was on Dragonstone when she told him this, but she didn't tell him where he'd die. Uh, but I would bet money that Varys will die. But I will also bet money he's not going to die like this. Varys has always been a spy, a political player. For him to die by zombies, I guess I can understand how that. No matter how many spies and how smart you are, zombies, you know, and the Night King could get you. But I feel like more that's going to be, you know, it's kind of he's been playing a political game. I almost think his death has to be political. That's that's my so two cents. We, but we kind of assume though that early in the season that Winterfell will fall. It, you would think. Do we not? You yeah. would think, but okay, this is a great point to get to it. I've jumped ahead for everybody watching. I've jumped ahead to two, frame 259. It's Arya still running through these hallways, and she's just, you know, just really scared. So to answer your question, Catfish, earlier in this podcast, I mentioned Lord of the Rings. And I know that George R. R. Martin, the creator of this world, was very much influenced by that. So if you ask me my thoughts, I think there's no way that, you know, Winterfell can survive when the Night King and in the full forces of his terrible demons attack. But on the flip side, it's also a bit like, well, if he if Winterfell's destroyed, but the Night King kind of gets defeated in the battle, then what would be left to happen in the what would be left for the final couple episodes of the show? And I think the scouring of the Shire, which once again I'm not a Lord of the Rings expert, but I'm pretty sure that in the Lord of the Rings book, spoilers for those. You know, they defeat the evil eye, they defeat Sauron, they destroy the ring, and everybody's real happy. But then Frodo and his, and his buddies go home to the Shire, and oh wait, there's some evil bastards who've overtaken it. And so it's like we got to fight again. So part of me wonders if the Game of Thrones is formatted a lot like Lord of the Rings. I could see the big battle, defeat the Night King, and then oh crap, we still got King's Landing and Cersei to deal with. I'm, I'm spitballing, but I've rambled on. What do you think? I mean, I I think I think it is more. Like, I don't think that he gets defeated. I think it's that I not stereotypical, but I I mean, you know, things have to get really really bad for our heroes. And obviously, you know, King's Landing is supposedly where the action is, but because we follow the Surly Starks. To us, uh, Winterfell has a place in our hearts. So I think, I think Winterfell has to go down and and go down hard. And I don't think, and I think that it's kind of a thing where they kind of just not not roll through Winterfell. I think it'll be a big battle, but I think they have to escape Winterfell, and Winterfell is destroyed. Okay, I'm uh, put that down in your predictions, folks. 
Here we've jumped up to frame 309 from all Arya's running. And here Arya's actually, you know, she's not running. You assume this is happening before the battle. And she's saying, you know, I've seen death. It has many faces. I can't wait to see this one is the gist of what she's saying. And she holds up, once again, what appears to be a dragon glass dagger. And people have been saying, who is she saying this to? Like, who is she saying, oh, I can't wait to see this face to? And for some reason, I've mentioned this character earlier, but I wouldn't be surprised if Melisandre isn't the person she's talking to. Melisandre wants to come back and fight. You know, Melisandre's coming back, let's be honest. She's coming back. Why? Because she wants to, you know, fight the evil of the Night King and all the forces of the dead. Of course, she was on Arya's list. And so when Arya's like, oh, I'd like to see this face, and if Arya suddenly saw her and was holding up the dragon glass dagger to her, I I could see that happening other people have said, no, she's talking tough. She's like, I want to see the Night King. If his is the faith of death, I want to see it. Any thoughts on who she's saying this little line to, Catfish? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. It's... Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, it's good that you have no because uh, frames 335 and 337, it's faded to black 339. It's just all nothingness. And so when we say we don't know, we mean we don't know. So we are going to jump ahead to where there's some sort of image. And yes, here, three, frame 349, you can begin to see it's on April 14th that this show is coming back one month away. I can't believe it. Some people say things like, oh, why did they have to come out with a trailer? Why did they have to do this? Now, people who listen to the Game of Thrones podcast, people who f- follow Game of Thrones stuff on social media, we know it's coming back. We're excited. But tens of millions of people just in the United States, who knows how many around the world, watch this show. And you have to remind the people who aren't huge fans. So you do have to have trailers. That doesn't mean you, you know, we have to watch them. But they do have to get people ready. And so uh, I, I didn't have a problem with it. How did you feel about it, Kevin? I mean, it, it, has been, it has been so long. So long. I mean, they weren't even, wasn't that last year they were not eligible for Emmys? I'm trying to yeah, remember. They weren't. No, they weren't. You're right. They they didn't air a show. So, How could they be eligible for that base? <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, I I'm so I'm so excited for this. Obviously, it was very frustrating to wait for so long. Uh, I know for sure that there's going to be a lot of frustrations in it, just because there's no way that they can make everybody happy. With the way they finish it, I had some issues with the last season, but I'm just on the whole so satisfied to see this story come to a completion in a way that I had thought would never happen. I couldn't say it better myself, so I won't on frame 381. Here we see we've jumped outside. It's a brighter scene, so even a regular TV can probably see it. And we see it's three ships with the Kraken on the sails, the Greyjoy ships. This ship I've zo- this middle ship I've zoomed in in, and you see what appears to be a gold painted Kraken on the on the on the mast of the ship, not the mast on the front of the ship. I don't know where you where you know the part of the ship where you scream, "I'm king of the, the world!" On the, the bow, if you say so. I do. No, I'm kidding. Now, people have said, and I'm going to once again zoom in on this. People say... Are you going to frame 407? Okay, well, I'll be there in a sec, but frame 381, when you zoom in on this Kraken symbol, this crap, Kraken, this crap, this Kraken, for uh, lack of a better word, is kind of, you know, straight up and down. It's vertical, which is the symbol that the Greyjoys have been using all this time. And when we jump to the next ships, at what frame did you say that was? That is, well, the frames where there's something really exciting that happens exactly. is let's frame 407. All right, so let's get to 407. And why don't you tell everybody what we're seeing on 407, Catfish? Well, we are seeing a person standing in the bow. I'm king of the looking, world. Looking at a mass of soldiers who are... And I don't know, I don't want to give too much away, but they appear to be bedecked in gold. Like the golden company that Cersei said she was going to, the sellsword she was going to get? It does indeed look like that. And then the real mystery, though, and Bubba, I pose this to you. Sure. Who are we looking at in the foreground, faced away from us with a very 70s kind of uh, brush-backed hairdo? I would say... 
if you've looked at this and didn't think about it at all, you would think this was Jamie of season one, Jamie Lannister, wouldn't you think that? Obviously, we don't think that's who that is, but uh, that's who we would believe it is based on this look, even the color of the armor. And then he wears almost like a, I want to call it a cape, but it's around his waist, so it's more like a skirt that even looks like a Kingsguard thing. This most likely isn't Jamie Lannister. This is most well, likely. Well, the only issues, yeah. if you look, it's funny. You, if you look, you look closely. You can see his right hand yeah. is clearly a hand, and then the left hand has a glove on it. Mm. Well, I see. Yeah, I see on four third four oh seven. Sorry, I see. Yeah, uh, both hands. They have something on them. They look like hands. I should say. And uh, or that looks. Oh like yeah, you're thumb. right. They're both. They they're both. They're both. Sorry, that was in uh, in four eleven. I'm able to see his full hand. Yeah. And this is why it's important to go through it frame by frame. So clearly, both hands there. So Kyburn has fixed Jamie entirely. He put another hand on. <laughs> if 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 Kyburn had fixed his hand, I'd be I would be uh, uh worried uh about a um uh, dead by dawn situation <laughs> and my dog so uh people who this could be a book spoiler but people guess that in the books the leader of the golden company is this guy named harry strickland who's not supposed to look like jamie from the, from behind but that's who people are guessing i've zoomed in on it and uh even I mean, though you have all these people harry in gold, strickland yeah is that a great I mean, name you've got Arya, you've got sansa you've got john snow and then there's a guy who uh sounds like he's an accountant from liverpool no, he sounds like a personal injury lawyer. Let Harry, Harry Strickland, Strickland do for you. <laughs> Harry Strickland did me taxes. <laughs> uh, one final thing before we leave this shot. Yeah, I'm on 419. You can see this cracking on the sails is kind of like, for lack of a better word, it's a diagonal, which implies that it is the ships of Euron. So those three ships that were the first thing we saw, you would guess because of the Kraken was up and down, that's uh, Theon going to rescue his sister Yara, who we really haven't seen in any promotional materials. She she claims that she was, and I'm not saying she's lying, but she says she was, you know, kind of very pregnant when a lot of the promotional things were happening, like promotional photos, and that's why she's not in them. Catfish, is Yara Greyjoy going to survive? Uh, childbirth? <laughs> No, I mean the show. I mean, it's the actress is Gemma Whalen. I, I'm sure she'll survive. She said she survived. I'll take her at her word. Okay, is, well. you... <laughs> frame by yes. frame. Never take a PR person's word, but you can take the person's word if they're still alive. That is a very good point. Um, you know, I'm always inclined to say people are going to live. So I'll say she's going to live. Because we don't care about her that much. Here's three people, and at least one of them, I can promise you, or I would be willing to bet, isn't going to live and survive season eight. I'm on frame 439. It's Ed from the Night's Watch, Tormund, and Beric. They're entering some big doors and looked, looking at the stonework uh, inside these big doors. You're going to assume they're at a castle, not Castle Black, which appeared to be built out of wood. And so which castle? Possibly Winterfell, but I would say a hundred percent no way. Beric Dondarrion, after being brought back so much, is going to survive. How do you, give some odds, Catfish, real quick? On uh, once again, we're here on frame four thirty nine. Ed, Tormund, and Beric. What is the chance that all three survive? What are the chances all three die? Well, I'd say the chances all three. I'd say I would bet more that two out of the three die, and I think that only. Uh, Tormund lives to have giant babies with Brienne. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. I I, I don't know why, but uh, somebody's got to die, and I think Ed is a good choice. I think Beric, once again, I think Beric's dead. The only reason why Tormund... Well, this is a great question. Why did Tormund and, and Beric Dondarrion, why did they survive the end of Season 7 when the wall came down? They tried to show as best they could that those guys were on the top of the wall section that didn't tumble down. Here we see them in the trailer, so we can assume they didn't die. Based on the logic of the show, to meet up with Ed, they would have had to walk about 150 miles inland <laughs> to find Ed at Castle Black. But why not kill them there with the wall coming down if they didn't have more to do? 
if to then just kill them in a different way from the ice zombies. I, I I'm asking questions. Well, I, I mean, they'll know. have they'll have they'll have something to do. But I mean, we we knew that they weren't dead, right? Because right. they didn't show us. They're they're important enough characters that we would have had to have seen them die. I can listen. It's, it's, it's not enough to just see them on the the fiftieth story of a building and then that building completely collapses and then we assume they're dead. This is an action movie. Nobody's ever dead. I've jumped up to frame four fifty nine. Here we have Bran Stark, uh-huh. Bran the Three Eyed Raven Stark, and as I go to four sixty one, we see this blurry thing in the beginning starts to come into focus as we rack focus to Sam Well. Samuel Tarley. What do you think of Bran and or Sam? As I'm sorry, uh, as Sam turns his head, we see a bit of breath, like cold breath coming in. And then Bran racks out of focus, and we see Sam, and, and he's not and, looking happy. Well, because, uh, you know, uh, the three-eyed crow is, is doing some of that three-eyed cl- crowed uh, blabbing. Right. He's... He's, how difficult w- would it be to deal with someone like this? I mean, he's not even, he, he's not, he doesn't even have like, it's not even the piece of like the Dalai Lama or something like that. It, it's like he's been brainwashed. Well, how about this? Do you, you, you know, it's trying to make us think, oh, he's going to have to go tell John this terrible thing about him. Right. Uh, how did you say it? Oh, anting. <laughs> Giving <laughs> yes. his ants, oh. But the, um, could it be just like, you know, Sam? I looked and saw that you didn't give Gilly credit for your figuring out that <laughs> Prince Rhaegar got annulled and married Lyanna Stark. How about if the Red Crow gives him a task? Sam, I know things are really bad here, but I need you to return all the things you've stolen over the years. <laughs> Gilly. The sword. The, sword, the, the books. books. I mean, oh. Gilly. Yeah. Does Sam survive, Catfish? What's your take? Does Sam survive? See, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to say that Sam has to survive. I would say, yeah. Listen, I, I will. I will say everybody except for one Stark passes away, but Sam will survive. Wow. Oh, okay, I accept that. I think both Bran and Sam live. That is my official prediction. I mean, but, for Bran though, can you call that living? <laughs> it's a life, people. I would say that. The only way Bran doesn't survive is if, once again, I keep going to the Lord of the Rings analogy, in that magic has to leave the world. How can Bran survive if magic has to leave the world? And so, you know, you wonder. I've jumped ahead to frame 505 Catfish. We have this great look of King's Landing, and the most important thing about it is right there on the left-hand side of the screen, we see a Lannister banner. (laughs) Lannister banner. Of the red of the gold lion on the red background of the sigil of House Lannister, and then here on frame five thirteen, frame five thirteen, there Cersei shows up. She's got our boy Kyburn wearing his hand of the queen pin. The mountain Sir Frank and Gregor is behind her. Now this just goes to show you, though. Five thirteen. Yeah, what does it show? We're seeing a lot of people. That are usually very confident and smirky. Yeah. And maybe you don't see it here in 513, but in a little bit later, Kyburn looks a little concerned. Yeah, I'm here on frame 529. He does look like, he, he doesn't look happy. Cersei has a little bit of a smirk. I think the. the a little bit of a smirk. <laughs> <laughs> That's full smirk, you're saying? We're going to have to get out the scale. How, how much of a smirk is she yeah. doing? Yeah, that is that is full 100% smirk. I think the one with the biggest smirk, though, is the mountain there in the background. He's... <laughs> yes, he has a, a frozen grin, <laughs> the rictus. Well, what I was going to say is acting, as, as I know, is all about the eyes, and so that's all he has to worry about. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Okay, it cuts to black here at 531 and 533, and then we're fading up. And this is a shot a lot of people love. It's of the winter town, and it, it seems to be just in, unsullied. I can't find any. Um, I can't find any uh, Dothraki hidden in this particular shot. But it's, it looks like a little boy climbing up a tree, and we can see it's a tree 
in the left hand side there's a branch at least mm-hmm. and he's he, holding on he's, to it right and he's watching he's the, got his little urchin fingerless gloves on right which you'll only notice if you go frame by frame and it, it, this scene it looks a bit like of dickens you know this is tiny tim we got the chimneys blowing smoke here in the winter town we see winterfell in the distance and this is most likely from the very first episode. Everybody's mentioned it. The first episode of season eight will be the arrival of the queen, Daenerys, in some ways trying to mimic the arrival of the king at Winterfell way back in the very first episode of season one, the pilot entitled Winter is Coming. And as we pan up, we see that the army is, you know, is almost all the way, the beginning of the first people in this marching line are very close to Winterfell. This is trying to give us a size of the number of people Daenerys is bringing. And sure enough, at frame 559, Daenerys shows up. There are a bunch of Unsullied there, and uh, she's wearing her new white coat. And then we see Jon Snow kind of pops into it around 567. What do you think of these lovebirds? That would be embarrassing. Well, I mean, I'm just... I'd be embarrassed if that was if she's wearing that for the wedding after I know what happened on the ship. (laughs) So marriage between the aunt and her nephew what do you think catfish oh you know know, i I don't don't, i don't don't, yeah i'm gonna say yes i was gonna say they don't have time but during war why not okay let's go forward and let's look at frame 593 and there is a dragon there be dragons sansa's on the parapets there at winterfell and she's looking at it what do you think I mean, Winterfell, I mean, enjoy all the scenes of Winterfell you can, (laughs) because it is going to be a smoking pile of ash. Now, as I go forward, there's something, is that its mouth open at frame 601? It's Sansa looking up at the dragon flying over her head, but I think at 601, it's not blowing fire or anything, but you can see, I think its mouth's open. Can you believe it? Uh, yeah, you got to breathe I mean, a lot. You got to breathe as you're flying. Well, I, I mean, this is just an analogous to, uh, you know, when you're driving in a car with your dog and you roll the window down and it opens up its mouth just to get just to get refreshed. <laughs> right, it's leaning its head out the window. This is Drogon, and then uh, at frame six twenty seven, you see. Um, the other uh, Rhaegal, the other dragon flying behind Sansa, she hasn't bothered to look at him. She's going to look at Drogon. I have to be honest, the one thing that really sticks out at me about this shot of Sansa watching these things fly over her head is the what I would call the green screen work behind her. It's it's just quite obvious that you can see it and that, uh, you know, this isn't even the real sky behind her. This is something that they kind of digitally composed to make it look windy and clouds and that kind of stuff. She's still got her big circle uh, neck piece, which uh, is always a fan favorite, and um, she's looking up amazed. I mean, wouldn't you be? That is one big dog putting his head out the window. (laughs) Frame 653, we have the dragons flying over Winterfell. And the thing that blew me away about this uh, shot down on Winterfell, maybe I should have noticed this before, but do you notice how, like, all these kind of circular towers, they don't have a flat dome on the top. They just have kind of, like, rings on the top. And I'm wondering, is this a good design for snow to... to (laughs) to have a, a, a roof that's kind of a ring and then a hole in the ring where the snow could fall forward into that? I suppose that's it, for chimneys and stuff. You're trying to protect the chimneys maybe, but, uh, but I want to show me the architect. Show me the blueprints. I mean, it's, uh, it's so that the dragons can land. Come on. You always want... I always design my houses. I'm like, you know what I want? Like, if a dragon's flying around, I want them to see my place, and I want them to go, that's a good place to land. Also, another thing that just uh, some digital effect work doesn't work for me, I'm going to pull my zoom in on it a bit, but on the left-hand side of the screen, you see the area where the kind of the weirwood would be and the kind of uh, green space of Winterfell is that's in the walls. And uh, the way it looks is there are just so many trees there. I'm like, um, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't look real. It looks like a playground. Uh, but the fact that we have these million-dollar shows and these million-dollar exciting things, here I'm on frame 663, 
where you can even zoom in and see some of the people walking around in the courtyards. I, you know, I shouldn't complain. This is still incredible work these people are doing, no matter what. I mean, I, I can't even imagine. Has there been word on how much this season cost? Oh, uh, I, I'm sure there has. I haven't been able to bring it up. But what do you, you know? What do you think? Twelve million, fifteen million episode? I mean, there are only six episodes. What's going on here, man? I mean, you're saying per episode. Yeah. That much per episode. Yeah. Wow. Six Oof. frame six eighty five. We see J- John down in the Winterfell crypts, and we see Daenerys walking to him. She's. It's tough to tell in this if she's still wearing white or if that's her gray outfit. Everybody loves to go see the crypts. It's like uh, it's like a tourist trap here in Winterfell. As soon as you get there, what's the first thing you want to do when you visit Winterfell? Visit the crypts. Jumping up to frame seven hundred five, Daenerys and John both look. Right now, is there any? I'm gonna I'm gonna say something that uh, I think Mace is gonna show that I've, I've forgotten some stuff. There, there's some family down there, isn't there? For him and for her. Well, technically, for her, it would really only be that we assume it'd be her her sister by marriage. Lyanna Stark is her sister by marriage, you know, so her, uh, you know, you know, sister-in-law. And it's his mother, so right. uh, that's the only known relative of hers we have down there. There may be some others. Right. That, so, so he's going to visit mom, and he's going to see, <laughs> what, is, what is he going to see on her? He's going to see uh, just... Uh, Maybe he'll see. Maybe he'll recognize. Uh, he'll see uh, Daenerys in her. He'll be like, I, "It's like you, my mom. You and my mom. We're the same." Well, you better hope she doesn't end up with the same fate that his mom did and die in childbirth. Mm-hmm. Or, ooh, there's another bittersweet ending for Game of Thrones for you. I've jumped ahead to frame seven twenty-five. Jon Snow's eyes are entirely closed. Daenerys, she's looking at him. Now, there's always the chance that he's actually visiting Ned Stark's tomb down there, and because he hadn't seen Ned since the very second episode of the year, see of the series, excuse me. And so, no, I think, I think, and I'm, you know, again, like, uh, you know, I'm blue and about uh, Daenerys. I thought there might be somebody down there for her, except for (coughs) obviously a half sister. But I think this is when he is is visiting who he knows now as his mom. Man, and this is when he's going to tell her, and then I'm going to be, then I'm going to be interested. I'm going to be interested to find out because we've talked about this a little. Obviously, with Jamie and Cersei, that is bad, bad, bad. Well, they're brother sister, also very close. But in this world, yeah, in the not so distant past, in this world, their relationship wouldn't be so verboten. No. It's just verboten to us. In our modern times, so I wonder how not they're going to gonna handle this. Well, okay, but <laughs> not, not to you. But I wonder how they're going to handle this. Are they going to treat this the way that we treat it now, and it's going to be a big deal to them? Or are they going to be like, yeah, you know, uh, it happens, and it's totally cool? Uh, I, if I had to guess, Jon Snow, he makes a big deal of everything. He'd be like, "Chicken, I ordered steak." Oh. You know, so I say he's going to make it a big deal. <laughs> right? Girlfriend? No. I ordered girlfriend, not aunt. <laughs> I've jumped ahead up to frame 753, Catfish, and this means we're about halfway through. <laughs> That's great. It's only because you've totally, completely lied, and we're skipping a bunch of frames. Uh, hashtag, it's a lie. It's all a lie. <laughs> but at 753, it blows me away. Gendry here. This is supposed to be winter. This is supposed to be cold. Like, he's not layered up. His neck is totally exposed. His sleeves are rolled up. Obviously, he's a, he's a blacksmith. He's forging things. But even in winter, don't you think? You, Gendry, you, you got to bundle up. I mean, I mean there's, there's two, two things, things that we know about Gendry. He's got a shaved head, too, Catfish. <laughs> yeah, because, he's, because it's not cold enough for him. <laughs> He's got the Listen, fiery heart from Melisandre's like I'm. Yes, no, because he his metabolism just burns so hot. How else was do you think he was able to run so fast? Zoom, zoom, zoom. What do you think of this woman? I've jumped up to frame seven sixty three, Catfish. What do you think of this woman here on the right? Do you think that's his love interest? Because he's like, okay, Arya, you're too young. 
You think he gets a love interest? No. <laughs> Does he survive? How about that? Does Gendry survive? Yes. Yay or nay? I'm gonna say yay. I think uh, I, you're gonna be hard. You'd be hard pressed to get me to believe that one of the people that the people who aren't true combatants or aren't uh, you know royal are gonna die. I think Gendry's gonna live. I think Bronze's gonna live. I think Hot Pie is gonna live. Okay, that's a that's a good guess. At frame seven sixty nine, catfish. It's her friend zone, and he's pretty dark, like the whole thing is. You can see their Dothraki behind him. He's pulling his horse up, though. He's kind of you know like everybody else is kind of riding from left to right, and he's pulling his up. Like, let me get a look at this. Do you think he's seeing his girl kiss somebody else? He's like, wait a minute, Daenerys is kissing John. <laughs> he's like, hold up the horses. I mean, he could be. But he's happy to be in the friend zone. I've never seen anybody so happy to just just do whatever. Frame 7 of 87, it's everybody's favorite couple that, as far as we know, aren't related, Grey Worm and Masande. What do you think about these two sexy young I mean, we're not even sure that he's technically a man, are we? (laughs) Come on. Come on. He gave it up to Master Krasnus, and I don't mean he gave it up. I meant he, you, you know what I mean. Oh, I love that that the Grey Worm in the shot with all the troops behind him, and once again, we're going to assume is the Winterfell Courtyard. You could see his breath. Then at frame 807, he comes in, 813, they're together, smooch, and that's it. It's, it's you know, real quick, it's over by 817, Catfish. They We don't have much... Kissing between well, there's these not two. Much, there's not much. There's not. There's not much more he can do. But I will say this. I think season season seven showed us what else he could do. Hello. He knows something, Jon Snow. Um, I think Grey Worm is going to die. Oh, I kind of do too. I think that might be a. a we both agree in that one. Mm-hmm. Will you cry if our buddy Grey Worm, who you know really had a rough life, kind of like everybody, would you cry if he kicked the bucket? I mean, I'd be upset for him, but I think I'd be happier for you because now there's a chance that you and Miss a Day can get together. You think that he's the only problem standing between me and happiness? Okay. <laughs> I mean, clearly. Okay, I want to give a shout out to on Twitter at Alta Marie underscore. That's at Alta Marie underscore on Twitter. She said, the first time we attempted to record this podcast, it was a double C. Double C? Crappy connection. Long live Joffrey. Very good, Alta Marie. I'm going to retweet that. Thank you so much. We also have a comment live coming in from our good buddy, Double M. Double M? That's Matt Murdick, who's at Matt's of Game of Thrones audio blog on Twitter. He's saying, wait a minute. Barrack and Torment are too important where you have to see them die, but Stannis isn't, meaning that we didn't see Stannis die, but you're saying that uh, that we have to see Barrack and Torment die, so he's giving you a little grief about a comment we probably did about oh, yeah. no, 15 minutes ago was, on the show. I don't think, that, I don't think people were uh, emotionally connected to Stannis, and also, I'm not sure he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> now, that would be the real reveal. Hey, everybody, it's my duty. I mean, we saw, we quote-unquote saw Joffrey die, and he's not dead, so you can't trust anything. No, you can't. Let's go up to frame 817, Catfish. We have kind of a red, what you would assume is is burning background behind this figure. It appears to be Brienne in 817 slashing people. I'm going to assume that snow oh, would make that? that on the railing. And, uh, see that? This is why they need to be together, because I thought it was torment. <laughs> Catfish, no comment at all from me on you. It, Catfish, if people want to attack you for that comment, how can they find you on Twitter? Oh, they can hit me up at CJGman67. And you Listen, can... I'm a big t- Torment, uh, 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 whether it be t- Torian, I'm a shipper. I'm a shipper on those Heck two. yeah. Well, is Brienne going to survive? I may be, you know, looking at her slash what we assume are zombies, but it's so difficult to tell at 8 25 we finally see the king slayer the people the person who people rumor is king joffrey's father jamie lannister he kind of looks dirtied up for sure 8 27 he's screaming 
The camera comes around. It appears to be pod behind him at eight frame 831. 833, he's got a serious look on his face. What are your thoughts about Jamie, Pod, and Brienne and the Battle of Winterfell, Catfish? Any thoughts that any of those three, all those three, who survives? Oh, boy. I know I said I had Tormund and, and Brienne making big babies together. I think uh, I think Jamie uh, dies. I think he dies heroically. Uh, oh, I think he dies know, he, this season, too. He had well. That's good. Yes, it'd have to be this season. Um, <laughs> He's going to die he, in season nine. <laughs> season nine, postscript. Wouldn't it be nice? Happy postscript. And Heck then you just, yeah. Um, like, like the six feet under. We just see everybody get older and die. Um, I think. I think we lose Jamie. Okay. I think we lose. I think we lose Pod. Ooh, I could see us losing Pod too. How about? But you haven't mentioned Brienne. What's your thoughts? No, I'm, 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 I'm together on t- 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 Tormund uh, Giants Brienne. Uh, I'm together on them. They're making, they're making, they're making big babies together. All right, you can find the whole show on Twitter at double P H Q. That's the word double, single letter P for podcast H Q. Frame eight thirty five. We're in the throne room in King's Landing. People have poured over this shot if you zoom in on it and you have to zoom really far on the two outsides it just two random members of queen cersei's queen's guard Mm -hmm. then uh let's just go actually let's stop that and let's go left to right so we have a queen's guard member we have the mountain we have cersei on the iron throne we have Mm -hmm. what most people guess is this harry strickland the leader of the gold company next right in front of cersei then you have kyburn in his position then the next person who's down on the floor with uh, this leader, we assume, of the gold company, who is that person? It would make sense if it was Euron. Let's be honest. Euron's supposed to get the golden company and bring them to Cersei. So it would make sense if this was an episode one of Euron saying, hey, I got your sellsword company, Cersei. Here they are. But My only problem with that is I never, I, I, Euron likes to be in the center of things. This person is standing politely yeah. a few feet away. That's not that's not his move. <laughs> no, he's got great moves, but that's not it. I completely agree. But I, it listen. I just because I think they want to grab stuff from the early episodes. I'm gonna guess it's Euron's. I've heard some people guess that it was a character we've mentioned before, Yara, who was Euron's prisoner. I've heard some people mention Sansa. Where does this Sansa theory come from? Well, Cersei in season seven when she was talking to the Branker banker Tycho Naharis from the Iron Bank of Bravos about hey I need to borrow some money and get a sellsword company she phrased it as I need to get some things back which were lost generically something like some things that I had I lost I need them back you could read it oh she needs the seven kingdoms back but there's some people thinking oh she means she wants evil uncle Tyrion back she wants Sansa Stark back under her control and so some people have said any that's Sansa next to him any chance that she wants that is just her mojo? Well, it's tough when you're, you know, about to give birth and your mojo's going crazy. Now, and speaking of that. Speaking of that, 8-frame, 847. Let's go 847. This is a big one. And, you know, again, sometimes I'm a little slow on the uptake. I'm here for my good looks, uh, not for my intelligence. But even I myself, yeah. when I first saw this, was like, first of all, I put one and one together, and I got 754. No, that's good. Number one, she looks sad. Number two, she's drinking what appears to be wine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what do we know that she gave up for the baby? She did, in at least one scene, say, hey, I can't drink, implying that she understands modern medicine well, and that you're not how... supposed to drink. Well, that's how Tyrion guessed, I believe. I, I yeah, seem that to is how Tyrion guessed. That's correct. And she put her hand on her belly after that. Yeah. So uh, this, if we're right about this, yeah. and obviously we're not, we're not the only ones who saw it, because, but if we're right about this, that that's kind of a big uh, spoiler to give away in the trailer. Okay. How about this? She, she she has a baby, it dies in childbirth, it's stillborn. But then somehow the Night King comes back, he raises the baby from the dead. <laughs> the baby whoa, kills Cersei. Whoa, 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 whoa. 
I mean, how? By uh, uh, breastfeeding too hard? <laughs> Possible. I'm not. I would never say no to you, Kevin. Okay, all right. Well, good to know. What I find interesting about this is that, you know, once again, this actress, an incredible actress, when we begin this scene and she's drinking the infamous wine, she seems to be smiling, but her eyes are watery. Here I'm on frame 883, and that smile just solely dissipates. Could it be that, hey, I'm all alone because my brother, that's brother lover to you and I, yeah, left? Because yeah. here at uh, frame 830, 91 she's definitely given some side eye like what have i done yeah i mean i'll say this she's had her issues with uh jamie but uh all that seems to dwindle down to nothingness uh when you're when you're stuck playing connect four with kyburn every night what if you're playing connect four with the mountain (laughs) you're trying to get four in a row there uh frank gregor I think it would be hard. I think even when, even before he was Frank and Gregor, I'm not sure that would be one of the strongest games. Or uh, tic tac toe. Right, connect anything would be. He'd be better with stuff you have to destroy. You know, you yeah. sank my he battleship. Might be, he might be the the kind of thing they use uh, when they're doing tests on animals, etc. Like getting the shapes in the right holes. That that might be the challenge for him. These next couple of shots in the trailer catfish and i've actually skipped an entire shot to jump up to frame 919 people say this landscape looks like it's beyond the wall but uh you know because it's such a frozen wasteland but it could just be that they're trying to show this is how the north looks when winter comes you know we heard winter was coming we've heard winter is here and so where do you think these dragon flight shots take place outside winterfell which is where i would have to guess or are or are people actually going to go north of the f- wall that I- isn't complete anymore? You know, I don't know where this is quote-unquote supposed to be, but doesn't it remind you of the place where uh, John and his merry band, band of fools yes, captured that White Walker? Yeah, no, it really does. I completely agree, yeah. Like they shot this plate photography up in Iceland is what it looks like, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, it, it looks, looks, it looks like, like that same... That, that same spot where they, where they got them. Uh, yeah, maybe the dragons are going back in time to say, this was a dumb I play. <laughs> you got our brother killed, you morons. All right, and then yeah. we go from that to now we're going to hang with Arya again in frame 925. Yes, and this is something that people love this because everybody behind her looks so scared, looks so panicked. We have a woman run forward right next to her and grab a kid and pull the kid away. But Arya, Arya, you know, she she isn't uh, running and scared. Her eyes are wide open. Once again, tell us what eyes wide open like this and mouth actually open like this catfish. What what emotion is she trying to convey? Well, I think she's, I think, I mean, I think they're all seeing dragons for the first time. That's what I think. Because that's, that's the way they're looking. And, and, and honestly, uh... I don't know whether they had somebody on a ladder or a boom saying, look over here, but some people were looking in different places. Well, these dragons fly fast or the guy with the boom. <laughs> yeah. Does I'm just saying, that? if you look closely at that frame, no, I, you're uh, right. there are four people looking in four different directions. What I wonder is, do you think there's any chance Bran and Sam told everybody, okay, as soon as John gets here, we got to let him know he's screwing his aunt in that the people are actually horrified and running away from the aunt and nephew relationship. <laughs> They're like, ah! It could be. It could be. It could be that. Frame 947. Yeah. 949. Grey Worm, he, he, what is his expression he's trying to get across as he puts his helmet, his helm on to get ready for this battle? And once again, we can see that it's he's at Winterfell. What expression is he trying to say? I thought he was trying to say, this job sucks. Is <laughs> I, I thought for this. it was. Uh, I thought it was. Uh, this time it's serious. Oh yeah, hell yeah. Let's jump to frame nine sixty seven. Maybe that's after they kill Missing Day. <laughs> yeah, he's po'd and he's like, "I'll teach you, you effers." Frame nine 
67 John at the Weirwood tree. This beautiful, is a tree. Beautiful this shot. is a tree. It, 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 most of it's there, but they paint the tree white so it looks like a weirwood. All these red leaves are either they're kind of placed there by the set decorators or they're digitally inserted. It is a beautiful shot. The pond that's always supposed to be there next to the tree is frozen over. I think in these shots you can get a you can zoom in and get a good shot of the uh, face on the tree which some trees have more distinct faces than uh, than others, and this one hasn't had the greatest, most distinct face. But I zoom in on it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this guy's... Does he look like John, the tree, <laughs> the face of the tree? Well, th- this is what I'm thinking here. Because I know that a C- cat used to love coming here. Well, remember, in the very first episode... She looked awkward, and Ned's like, they're the gods. She's like, this is, these are your gods. And Ned's like, you've given birth to five northern children. As if that's going to cheer her up. You know, like, hey, don't let this creepy tree with a face on it scare you. You've given up, you've given up five people who believe in this crap. Right, so I think that John's coming here to tell Kat, uh, screw you, lady, for being so mean to me all those years. Aww. Frame nine. <laughs> and then she's... And then she's going to show up. Right, she comes out of... <laughs> That's when she shows up. That'd be great. Frame 977, we have a very extreme close-up on the Hound. I think it's tough to tell anything about this other than that there's some fire behind him. Anything you would say to the Hound, Catfish? Uh, yeah. You got any marshmallows? <laughs> nice. Frame 991, Jamie Lannister now gets a speaking line. And uh, it's a good line here. You know, hey, I, I'll i paraphrase it to say he said, I'm going to fight for the living. I made a pledge to fight for the living, and I tend to honor that pledge. How do you feel about this guy who's really been done some terrible things over the seven seasons so far and done some, you know, good things over the previous seven seasons and uh, things in between? What do you think about this character now? I think we've both said that he's not going to survive this season, but how do you feel about him? Will you be sad when he, when he dies, Catfish? Well, I mean, I would say uh, it doesn't feel like a super bold choice to fight for the living instead of the White Walkers. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe he could have phrased it a different way. What if uh, it, he's, he's an oath breaker. What if it's, uh, I made a pledge to fight for the living, but I'm on their side now, bitches. Ah! Yeah, I made a pledge for the fight for the living, but it all depends on how you define living. <laughs> okay, catfish. Uh, so I think I think I'm going to be sad. I think he's going to have. It's it's really funny yeah. that you know uh, we talk about the the way people uh, especially look at uh, you know incest because it is so because there's such a difference between the way we view it yeah. and the way it's viewed in this world. It's still bad in this world, but it's a little bit different. But it's uh, it's it's amazing that, and I think it's, it's just a testament to the character and the portrayal, uh, that people uh, are rooting for Jamie now after uh, he's having sex with his sister. She's a horrible person. He threw Bran out the window, and yet now we're like, yeah, we understand even that he's torn between the love of his life and his family and doing what's right. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible, I have to say. What's possibly incredible is here at frame 1001, we have a hand picking up what looks to be the bow, and I don't mean bow of a ship, the bow of an arrow, is there any chance that there's a bit of the Hobbit in this? Remember, the Hobbit ends, spoiler alert, with somebody shooting down a dragon. Is it possible you have a dragon glass tipped arrow and you shoot down the undead dragon that way? Can you guess well, who's picking tell, up I mean, this book? Only, well, I'll say this. I mean, only through the magic of frame by frame technology yeah. is, and we don't know, you know, sometimes they mix things up. But right after there's two frames of the bow being t- picked up, yep. there's a bunch of frames of Jon Snow looking very determined and running, and we can't see what's in his hand. We can barely tell what's going on. It's so dark. Maybe he's the one that grabs the bow, and he's going to be like, I'm killing this dragon with my bow. I could see him running because Daenerys just sacrificed herself. 
I could see that's what this running scene here at frame 105 and others is. You know, it's oh, so oh, dark, see, though. See, I mean, it's yeah. so dark. I mean, the only thing that would make me feel different about what he was doing there is if we had audio of him saying, you just don't measure up. <laughs> Well, we know who we'd be getting it there. And well, that's what I mean. Him. He's like, because then it would be, you know, Tyrion uh, stepping out on, on his lady with him. Catfish, we're at frame 1015, one of my favorite frames in the entire trailer. And it, I'm glad we finally got, got here. How many frames are left? About 500. <laughs> Uh, this appears to be Knights of the Veil, vale, based on the silverness of their armor, running uh-huh. towards a closed door. Of course, that frame disappears by frame 1019, where it appears to be horse hooves. People really want to see direwolf hooves in this shot, but it appears to be horse hooves running through. And definitely, to uh, talk about frame by frame, there is a frame in here. I'll try to find it exactly here. It's frame 1033, where you can definitely tell it's a horse hoof of running through this shot not much to say about it but by the time we get to frame 135 the dragons have roasted and melted the snow away for a bit they've also roasted their lunch and dinner because all there are are bones here john and daenerys are walking up to the dragons is john snow going to ride one of these dragons catfish what do you think i mean <laughs> if if he doesn't end up riding one of the dragons with what we know about him and the fact that there are two dragons that are alive and one that the Night King is riding, then I will eat my shirt if he does not ride one of these dragons. And you'll leave as big a mess as the dragons left there of all. <laughs> I will. I mean, there you can't, you know he's going to ride a dragon, right? I, I, I suspect one. it. Yes, that's very true. I want to just talk about effects work again on the shots where the dragons are in the foreground and John and Daenerys are walking towards them. To me, those look better than here shot 1043, where suddenly the human beings are in the foreground. And obviously they have to be kind of in front of a chroma key so you can clip them out and have dragons behind them, behind a green screen, I should say. Yeah. But uh, they're going to ride. I, you know, let's, They're going to ride together. Just like aunts and nephews have for centuries. <laughs> Frame 149, very lovely shot. Yeah, they're going to ride during the day and ride at night. 149, 153, or 1053, I should say. Sansa closes her eyes at 1055, opens them back up at 1057, 59. Sansa, is she going to live, yay or nay? Let's hear it. Well, uh, my prediction is... That only one Stark survives. Ooh, ooh, I and love I that. Count, but I know, I no longer count Bran as an actual human oh, being. Oh man, that's not nice, Catfish. Because because he's a three-eyed raven. He's not. He's no longer a human being. So I'm gonna say that it is Sansa who survives. She's the only Stark left. John dies. Uh, Arya. Arya dies. That's it. John and Arya die. I definitely am with you. Arya's dead. I think Bran and Sansa live. Here we are at frame 1061. But you say what you you think about John. Boy, I'm really torn. I I think he's going to... I think he's going to make it pretty far. You know, it's just... I mean, this is a turnaround. If he dies... How about this? If Jon Snow dies, which I could see happening... The very last episode. That's when I see it happening. I mean, forever I thought it was going to be, you know, I've always said it's a song of ice and fire, Jon Snow is ice, Daenerys is fire, and that they would be together and roll together. But now I'm starting to think uh, double M, as I call Jon Snow. Mopey Moperson? No, Mopey Moperson. Follow them on Twitter. He's not going to make it. And finally, he'll have a reason to be so sad. Because he'll be dead, dead. That's, uh, you know, you, I want to fight for the side of the living. P.S. I've been killed once. Jon Snow. <laughs> uh, lots of shots of Arya fighting people. In one of these shots, the shots around 10, 1,075, she appears to be outside, if you ask me. Like, she's up on the battlement. 
On frame mm. 1079, we have Daenerys looking very, very somber. Like she just, this is... she just spent some time with John. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to call her, you know, I'm going to say this is after the wedding. So now she's officially Triple M. Triple M? Yeah, Mrs. Moby Moberson. Oh. <laughs> that toast, that toast that Samwell made was so embarrassing. He ruined the reception. <laughs> he did. She is so sad to be married. She's closing her eyes. Maybe this is after John Snow dies. Ooh, ooh, catfish. Let's get to somebody who we say doesn't measure up. Frame one thousand eighty-seven, mm-hmm. and let's talk about this. This is evil Uncle Tyrion. Yes, he's still got his hand of the queen pin on. So. The thing I'm going to say, let's extrapolate from that. You look at this shot, there's no snow on the ground behind him. It doesn't look like mm-hmm. snow to me. It looks like dirt. Not only that, this show, this shot doesn't have the blue filter over it. Like they like to put a blue filter over everything that's shot in the north to let you know, okay, Good this point. is the north. Good point. To me, and this, yeah, there's oh, sorry, no go. clues. There's no clues of who he's actually looking at because... He looks up to even small children. So what I'm saying, though, is the fact that it doesn't mm-hmm. look like it's in the north. Does that mean Tyrion survives the battle at Winterfell? Because he's still got the hand of the queen pin on. Does that mean Daenerys survives the, the battle at Winterfell? I think this is... A, I think so, because I, I think the battle, battle of Winterfell is early. Okay. Does Tyrion survive the season? I think the battle of Winterfell season? is the second. Does this the evil uncle episode. survive the season? Yeah, your name. I think he does. I think he's the. I think he's the only Lannister who survives, mm. except for Joffrey. Okay, I, I I concur. Shot one thousand ninety five. A dragon opens his mouth at one ninety seven. At one ninety nine, the mouth is open, but we can see fire in it. At one thousand one hundred one. The whole screen is filled with flames. We are going over this frame by frame. Who said we won it? We can't keep going. We got to end this. <laughs> I need a, sc- well, the I last need a screen couple hundred I'm popping a, lot of, f- popping a lot uh, of peas like you do. You, you uh, aren't doing because you have that great uh, windscreen. So I apologize mm-hmm, to listeners mm-hmm. who have to hear me pop all my peas. What's uh, next, luckily, Yes. What, what, well, what is next? As you might expect, it's a bunch of frames of darkness. Starting no. with, with frame 1105. It is complete darkness, and this continues, unless there's something wrong with my screen, for a long time. Yeah, like, until about... Yeah, say it. Hold on, I missed it when I, when I scrolled. It's okay, it's my... 1,135. It starts fading back up, and this is a, a, a dolly shot down the line, and we see a bunch of Dothraki all dressed in their nude, they now have sleeves. You know, when they were in Essos and it was hot, they didn't have to wear sleeves. Now, because they're in the mm-hmm. cold, they're like, uh, get us some darn sleeves. Winter's here, baby. Then we have a shot at 1,165, 67. It's another pan shot, but this time we're moving from right to left. We have Brienne and Pod and the Knights of the Vale. We keep seeing them. We're the typical Winter Sol- <laughs> Fell soldiers. Where's everybody else? Uh, that's who are behind Podrick and Brienne. We've already mentioned how we feel about how they're going to survive. Anything you want to say about this shot, Catfish? Brienne, I can't tell. It's so dark if she has her Valyrian sword in her hand or not. It looks like it possibly is, yeah. It's hard to tell. I mean, basically, I would say <laughs> if if the show is really as dark as the trailer is, and so much of it is set in the dark, I would say you have to change that aphorism from the night is dark and full of terrors to the night is dark and very dark. <laughs> the night is dark and we can't see it. <laughs> the night is dark and, man, it is really dark. <laughs> <laughs> frame 1189 we it's so dark but we can still see the lines on sir jorah's face here sir friend's ode i for, i've already forgotten is he surviving yes or no i think i think if if he i'll go first i think if they had him survive grayscale if they had him survive the white heist to me that says sir jorah survives he can survive anything so i'm predicting i don't know how because probably because the most painful thing for him is to not be with Daenerys in a romantic way. So oh, yeah, there's no, nothing the Night King could do that would be any he, worse. 
He's going to die of a broken heart. <laughs> so he's dead inside already. <laughs> he is dead inside. His heart is as crusty as his skin used to be. Oh. Ouch. Frame 1205. You see the lights of Winterfell in the distance. The camera is actually kind of what you would say uh, uh, being brought down like on a jib arm because we're getting closer to the ground, closer to the ground as we go to frame 1209, 1211. And what comes into the shot but a dead horse's leg. What do you think, mm. Catfish? That's This is pretty much it for content. It's just telling us what we all knew. The dead are coming. Yeah, it's funny that it's not, I mean, I guess that's, you know, that's probably the least exciting shot you can show us and give us a sense of, you know, it's not like we don't know the dead are coming. They already took the wall down, for God's sake. P.S., the dead are coming. But can you believe we went through a trailer people talk about who you didn't see you didn't see theon you didn't see yara unless he was in that throne room scene you didn't see euron you didn't see a bunch of people i think the biggest shock you didn't see my boy bron you didn't see bron well exactly right i was gonna say the biggest shock for me you didn't see is you didn't see the night king he is the true adversary but he doesn't make appearance at all possibly it's because every time he would appear he'd be on the dragon or some other spoiler connotation but not showing the night king bit of a shock for me it is weird that you'd think they would have one shot of him just standing and looking menacing in a way that they could isolate him and just without giving anything away. And that's it, Catfish. April 14th. There are a couple other frames of uh, blackness, believe it or not. <laughs> no, really? Can you believe that there's more frames of nothingness? That's it. Listeners, we have yammered on for so long that uh, it must be uh, it must be uh, frustrating. We want you guys to go ahead and contact us and tell us what you think, where you agree with us, where you disagree with us on Twitter. It's at Double P H Q for Double P Podcasts Headquarters at Double P H Q on Instagram. It's at Double P H Q on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Double P H Q. On YouTube, I apologize. It's just some crazy search you have to do. Search the Joffrey podcast. You'll find us. Catfish clothing thoughts as we wrap up this podcast. I mean, uh, I uh, I am I'm super excited. I'm just I am just so excited. It's here. We're gonna get to see the end of this. Uh, as I, I I believe I've said this a few times. I. I that we've talked about how the producers talked to George R. R. Martin and kind of said, like, we think this is where this is going to go. And maybe okay. he gave him some, he gave him some high signs. But I also, I've also felt like for a while, just because George R. R. Martin has a, a healthy ego as well. He should. Yeah. He, should. Given he created him, this incredible world. I, I've given him a hard time for some things justifiably, but, but he should have an ego and and I honestly think that he is going to change some things just to make them different from the way this show ends. Now, of course, he's 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 there's some storylines that the show has avoided, so it's easy for him to do that. And, and normally, you would think, I mean, there there's some some pretty major storylines, so you know there are going to be some differences. But I think he might add some even even more differences, nonetheless. I am, as I said earlier, excited to see this story end that I started reading 15 years ago, 17 years ago, something like that. And even I was warned at the time, this guy writes slow. And since then, he's come out with two books, three books, maybe. (laughs) So I'm excited to see the end of this. Let me say that I just want to piggyback on what you're saying about George R. R. Martin. I think there are a lot of things he still doesn't know how they're going to go. I think when people say, well, I said, I guess I said, boy, the scenes of Bravos in the House of Black and White and Arya just saying, okay, this is it for me later, how that felt like that's all it is. Personally, I wonder if it's because when the show creators went to George R. R. Martin and say, well, okay, Arya went to Bravos to become a faceless man, what happens? He goes, well, she becomes a faceless man, and then uh, I'm going to have her leave somehow. Well, what are the circumstances? I haven't figured that out yet. I'll figure it out as I'm right. writing. And they went, right. oh, okay. And so, yeah, I think the books are definitely going to be different from the show because 
some things he hasn't figured out yet. I think the big the big points will be there. I guess the final thing we should talk about catfish is I don't think there's going to be an iron throne. I don't think there's ever there's going to be anybody sitting on the iron throne at the end. I think the throne room will be destroyed as we saw in all these visions. And so I think But who's going to be but you you certainly don't think that the kingdom will dissolve into anarchy. Someone No, will no, be I don't think it's going to kingdom. dissolve into anarchy, but I'll say this. I think the last episode which is going to be directed by the showrunners DB Weiss and uh, David Benioff, I think it's going to end where, you know, okay, it feels like, okay, the kingdom, you know, there's no king anymore. People can just live and kind of rule themselves. And I think it's going to end with some sort of s- s- scene that implies, you know what, people are people. And it will probably be a bunch of extras where there's suddenly go, you know, people fighting over some, you know, over a bridge or over a, a piece of land. And that's going to let us know as the viewers, we went through all this hell to finally join together and defeat this big problem. And then, sure enough, we've gone back to our petty squabbles. That's that's my thought. All right. Well, Depressing, no, I, huh? Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I think someone will be in charge. Who? Well, I mean, I think... <laughs> I haven't said what's going to happen with Daenerys... But I've killed off most people, so I'm gonna go <laughs> with work. I'm gonna go with Sansa. All right, okay, I like it. It also I've always said this. It's always if if you went by the ending of the War of the Roses, which was a bit of historical inspiration for Game of Thrones, the War of the Roses ended with kind of the equivalent of Daenerys marrying Sansa, meaning this two houses were kind of brought together in a in a wedding to you know bring some peace. And uh, I, obviously, let me say, uh, as much as we might like it, I don't think Sansa's going to marry Daenerys. But Sansa being left in charge, even though it won't be on the Iron Throne, in my opinion, I could definitely see it. Hmm. All, All right. right. My name's Bubba. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, other things, at Fit and Trim. That's F-I-T-T-E-N-T-R-I-M, at Fit and Trim on Twitter. And I am Catfish, and you can hit me up at CJGman67 on Twitter only. Exclusive. We want you guys to comment with us once again. Instagram and Twitter at Double PHQ. Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. YouTube, search it, find it. We're out there. Let us know what you think. We're so thankful. Let me just say once again, we're so thankful for anybody who's put up with all our silliness and helped us enjoy this great TV show all these years. So you'll catch and now, us. But, oh, yeah, sorry. No, hold go. on. Hold on. Now, Let's I know it. it's been a while since we did this, Bubba. But, you know, oh, we no. cannot end an we episode can't. of the Joffrey of Podcast without our Joffrey of the Week. And let me just explain this very quickly. Let's hear it. For people who don't know or people who know, we have identified Joffrey as the greatest human being real or fictional ever created ever his faithfulness yeah his sense of honor right his braveness his dignity he is a quality human being and because it is so hard to reach that sense of almost sainthood that he has yeah we do like to point out people real world examples oh, of yeah. people who are trying to embody the essence of Joffrey. Yeah. And so whenever we do a podcast, we nominate our Joffrey of the Week. And, and Bubba, I'm going to go first if you don't mind. I totally mind, but I'll allow it. Okay. My uh, Joffrey of the Week is uh, Pat McCrory. Pat McCrory? Uh, yeah. He was a uh, politician from North Carolina. A lot of people might remember him as the person who came up with the uh, the bathroom bill in North Carolina. And he was oh uh, yeah, he was voted out of office, and uh, then he uh, blamed uh, his loss on the non citizen vote. Oh uh, no! Apparently, he was put out of office by non citizens, and then and and this morning I saw him on Meet the Press. Uh, basically scolding younger politicians <laughs> like Ocasio Cortez. Oh no! What do you um, what do you say? Yeah, you know, basically they need to learn from the older folks and uh, that they're brash. And so, for his sense of 
of honor and dignity and and and, and rightfulness. Oh yeah. Uh, he gets my honor of uh, Joffrey of the week, and also if there is anybody who's working on Meet the Press, uh, just know I'm taking you off my record list. You're on probation, Meet the Press. Let me say, uh, Sir Chuck of House Todd will be heartbroken when he hears that scolding you've given him. So my Well, you know what it's going to be? Yeah. I don't know if you can do any worse than Liz Cheney on the program today. He said, welcome, Liz Cheney. And she said, thank you, Todd. <laughs> 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 That'll put him in his place. All right, so yeah, Catfish, yeah, well, my job. That's jo- what he gets for having two front first names. My Joffrey of the Week. Yeah. He's somebody who's really been out there. Like, he's kind of been in the news, it feels like, for a good three or four months because people look to him. Now, why is this person my Joffrey of the Week? Well, Joffrey, why? remember when he was in the um, uh, small council session with his small mm-hmm. council, and evil Uncle Tyrion was like, you know, Sansa's my wife now. She's not mine to, she's not yours to torment or torture, or my, not yours to torment. And he had he got so upset with the questions, he got so frustrated with the questions and the talk back that he started the, the one time, the only time Joffrey lost his, uh, you know, uh, his, his composure. He screamed, "Everyone is mine to torment!" And then uh, his granddad told him he was tired, and he's like, "I'm not tired." I saw behavior like that this week, meaning kingly mm-hmm. behavior from yes. uh, somebody who. Many people believe, like King Joffrey, can fly because he kept singing, I believe I can fly. It's R. Kelly. Okay. R. Oh, Kelly, R. Kelly. When the, small folk, when the small folk was interviewing him, he got mm-hmm. very upset and very emotional, like His Grace did. And mm-hmm. like His Grace, you know, he's just trying to live his life. That's crazy. Crazy that Joffrey would kill a prostitute Roz in his bed with his own crossbow. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That is would crazy. It would never happen. It, is this? I mean, come on. People believe him, and so mm-hmm. for his righteous anger, R. Kelly, my Joffrey of the week. Wow, and that's that's a great one. That's a great one. I, I feel like we have two real strong candidates this week. <laughs> They're very very strong. All right, listen. We've been going a while. Thank you so much for putting up with us once again. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We want you with us. We're going to be giving away all our prizes here in the final season and you'll hear us next time and maybe someone besides holly hunt pants will win some probably (laughs) she's so lucky (laughs) so you'll hear us next time on the The joffrey Joffrey of of (laughs) podcast thank you guys so much good night